Father, we believe that you are victorious. Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. And because of that, we can declare with confidence that Jesus is victorious. He's victorious over everything we're going through. He always has been and he always will. So let's sing together, declaring that we will see a victory. We believe it by faith because we serve a God who has already won the battle. Let's sing together with boldness as we lift up the name
Father, it's in these times where things are really rough, where there's a struggle that it can be so hard to find our peace and our rest in you. But we know that you're calling us to trust you. And so we just ask God that you'd help us to let go, to surrender, to trust that even if there's a mountain that seems impassable, that we would trust you in the midst and we'd find our rest in you regardless of our circumstance. So even now as we sing, Father, would you help us to hear your voice, to find that rest in you, because you are God and you're good. And that's all that matters. So we press into you in this moment.
still in this moment and trust in Him. Trust Him with all of your fears, all of your anxieties. And let's believe together that He will lead us through this, that He is enough, that He's never once left us or forsaken us, and He's not gonna do it now. We trust you, Jesus, in this moment. Come on. And I will be still and know that you are God and you are good. In you I find my hope because you are God and you are good. Just sing it to the Lord all together. Now we'll be still and know that you are God and you are good. We believe you, Lord, and in you I find my hope. Cause you are God and you are good. I'm letting go.
Hello, love the chit chat so much. We are here and we enjoy talking to each other. So I love the conversation. I am Ivy and I am the children's pastor here. And sometimes I get to bring the message in um, this service and it, it makes me so excited. I have been praying for you. Of course, I didn't know who was gonna be in this room this morning, but I have been praying that the spirit would move the spirit would move. And so I, I've been giddy all morning. Sometimes I feel nervous before I do this, but I've been like so giddy. I just think God's got something good for us. Um, so we are gonna be in Luke 8. If y'all have your Bibles, you can turn to that or find it on your app or it'll be up on the screen. Um, we read this this week in the well. So our church is um, just reading the Bible together and we are using this journal called The Well and you can jump in at any point um, if you're interested in reading the Bible with us. 
Uh, there's journals at the welcome desk in the lobby. So stop by there if you want one of those. But we read this together this week. And so we're going to read it and, and talk a little bit about it. So Luke 8. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, from whom seven demons had come out. Joanna, the wife of Cusa, the manager of Herod's household. Susanna and many others. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. And this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. So that was a lot of verses. But I, I was like, we just got to read the whole thing together. We got to read it all together. And there are three main things that I want to kind of spend some time on. And the first thing that I want us to look at is who heard this parable? Who heard this? So we know that the disciples, Jesus' best friends, the disciples who left their careers, their families, their, their, uh, the homes that they knew, their reputations kind of were on, the, like they left all that they knew, made a lot of sacrifice to follow Jesus and literally stayed by his side for like every day. They made a huge sacrifice to be with Jesus, to follow Jesus. And then the other people that were in the crowd, you've got some women there who had been transformed by Jesus in some way. And they are there, it says supporting, I mean, I, I imagine they're the ones like, hey, we gotta figure out what we're gonna have for lunch today. Where are we gonna sleep tonight? We gotta get, we gotta get these feet washed. I mean, they, you know, they're the ones doing all the behind the scenes stuff. And then you have this group of people, a large crowd of people that have heard about Jesus because of the miracles he had been doing. And they show up, it seems like, I don't, it doesn't seem like they made like a huge sacrifice. Like maybe they canceled their plans for the day, but they didn't like give up their homes to follow Jesus or, or to be there. They just are like, I hear this celebrity Jesus is gonna be here. We gotta show up and listen. So they just show up kind of like, I, I don't know, to check the box that they'd, they'd seen Jesus, right? And you, the ones, Jesus tells this story and what's fascinating is only the disciples come back and are like, whoa, 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 what? So I assume like I, the rest of the crowd hears Jesus tell this story and they're like, okay, next time I plant a seed, 
I'm going to make sure it's on good soil. And so I can get my, you know, whatever vegetable I'm growing. Like, cool, cool story, Jesus. And the disciples are like, uh, this is weird. What, Jesus, what? What? I need to understand what you were talking about. And I think it's very interesting and something that you and I need to take note of that those that made a great sacrifice were the ones that had the boldness, took the time to raise their hand and go, I, what? Help me understand. Help me get this. That the disciples had made a sacrifice to follow Jesus. Their reputations were on the line. They had more invested and they were willing to go forth and be like, I, I, I have another quote. I, I need to know more about this. Uh, hold on. And it makes me think about you and I. When was the last time that we have made a sacrifice, done something uncomfortable, um, had done something a little bit risky in order to follow Jesus? That it's when you do stuff like that that you begin to, to have the boldness to like, wait, Jesus, I need to understand more. Help me get this more. That it is worth it, it is totally worth it, you guys, when God is prompting you to do something that is outside of your comfort zone, that feels kind of like, oh, this feels a little risky. That it is worth it to do that because then you have something inside of you like the disciples that's like, hey, hey, can you help me understand this? Can you show me what that means? I don't know about y'all, but like when I read this, um, there's a lot of times I have questions and the questions are okay. Jesus wants us to be at a place with him where we go, hey, can you help me understand? Can you show me more? Can you help me see this? The second thing that I kind of want us to look at deeper is that when the disciples turn and go, hey, this is, what did you mean by that? Because it's gotta be more than a seed. And Jesus explains, and I want us to look a little bit deeper at that. Jesus explains that the seed is the word of God. The seed is Jesus. The seed is Jesus. And there are four things that are possibilities with this seed, with Jesus. The first is that you get the seed, you see Jesus, but you know, you're, you're exposed to Jesus, but you really, you're like, I'm moving on. I don't really like, I, okay, cool. I, I heard about that, but I'm not interested in doing anything more with it. It's the first option. The second option is you hear about Jesus, you, you see this, oh, cool, this sounds, oh, wow, that's awesome. But then the next day you kind of get busy and distracted and it, it doesn't really go anywhere. The third option is you hear about Jesus, you really think it's cool, you start focusing on Jesus, you start doing this whole Jesus thing, you think it's really, you're like, wow, I really, I'm seeing some, some growth from this, this is cool. And then, did you see, do you all remember what it said? You start getting worried about stuff. And what I think, you start just getting distracted and you let those distractions take away from your focus on the seed, on Jesus. And so then it withers. And I don't know, you know, there, there's a worry of the world, you get too busy, things get too crazy. Um, you start spending your time and attention and focus on something else and it withers. It, do, it doesn't go anywhere. But the fourth option you experience Jesus, you're focused on it, you stay focused on it. It says you retain it, like you really take it in, your focus is on it, you're, you're focused on understanding. You persevere, you keep going, no matter the worries, no matter the stresses, you keep focused on Jesus. And what happens, y'all? What happens? Fruit. Major fruit, 
from this little seed that when we focus on Jesus, we stay committed no matter if it gets boring, no matter if it gets hard, no matter when we get busy, no matter when it, it starts to get, you know, like uh, uncomfortable, you stay focused, you persevere, and that is when fruit happens. And what I think, that Jesus gives these four examples. I, I mean, is it safe for me to say that everyone in this room is like, likes the fourth option best? Is that safe to say? Like, is anyone like, I'm, you know what, I'm good with one. Like, I don't, I really can't, don't care if this goes anywhere. Like, I re- at the end of my life, I don't want anyone to say my life mattered at all. Like, every single one of us are sitting in this room going, I want option four. At the end of my life, you guys, at the end of our lives, don't we want to be people that are like, my life mattered for the kingdom of God. My life mattered more than I, I could ever imagine because like all of us want option four. I've never met someone who's like, I really don't care. I just want to, you know. And I'll be honest, like it, it, there's something about this that has bothered me. Okay, I'm gonna, there's something about this that has bothered me as I've like studied this to prepare for this day. Because I've been like, God, if you are, if you have like power and authority over all things, like I believe that Jesus has authority over all things. Why don't you just like plant every seed in good soil? Does that, is that like a fair question? Do y'all think that's fair? Like, why can't, why can't we, Jesus just go seed and everyone has good soil? Like, why? Doesn't he have the power to do this? And I've been asking, like, God, what, why? Why have you given four options and 75% of them lead to not good? I want us all to be in the option four. Why? And it was like Friday morning. And because I'd been asking this question, like, God, why? Why is that? And it was uh, Friday morning, and I felt in my heart, you know, the answer, because I care about relationship. Because I care about relationship. And then the very next thought I had in my, my mind were two people um, that I have a relationship with, two, two people. And both of these people are people that I, I know love me. Both of these people are the kind of people that uh, would show up for me at any point. I know I could send them a text, I can call, and I'd say, I need help with this, and they would like, I'm there. They will show up for me. These are two people that I feel very safe with, that I feel confident with. I know that whatever I do, they will love me and care about me. These are people I explicitly trust. Okay? And I immediately, like it was like right after, because I care about relationship, I immediately thought of these two people. And then I thought about those two people I've known for a long time. Those two people uh, we've gone through, we've had really fun thing. we've done really fun things together, but we've also gone through really hard things together. That we've had conflict with each other. We've gone through just those like frustrating things of life, hard stuff in life, and we've walked through those together and it's taken time. But through the course of that time, we have a relationship that is the sweetest thing. So I want you to think right now, I want you to think just if you need to like close your eyes to not be distracted. And kids, y'all can do this too. I want you to think of some a, a relationship you have in your life. It might be a sibling or a spouse or a parent or a friend. A relationship that you have in your life where you feel safe, you feel known, you feel loved, 
You know they will show up for you like a, re a relationship. Okay, do y'all have it in your head? And then I want you to think about how long have you known that person? I bet it wasn't just last week. Has everything about that relationship been wonderful and peachy and great? I bet you've gone through some challenges. I bet you've persevered. Okay, here's the thing. That earthly relationship is what Jesus wants with you. It's what Jesus wants with you. And this is why I believe Jesus stands in front of this crowd and he looks out, he sees his disciples, he sees the women, he sees the masses of people that have shown up just to see him as a celebrity. They've shown up to check a box and he is pained by this because Jesus did not come to be a celebrity. Jesus did not come so we could check a box. Jesus came for a relationship with us, a relationship where we feel loved by him, where we feel safe, where we know he will show up so we can experience his goodness. Jesus came for a relationship. And that kind of relationship does not come just by like a, there we go. A relationship with your Savior comes with long, long time of perseverance, of daily, I'm going to read his words. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to show up. How many of y'all like to get here right today was hard? Hard? Anybody? Anybody? I know, yes, thank you. The moms are like, yes, we made it, you know? <laughs> uh, it, th but this is what he wants. That he's saying, persevere, persevere. The fruit is coming, persevere. The fruit is coming. And he desires a relationship. That is why it requires the, the, the length that not every seed gets planted in good soil because for you and I, it requires perseverance. I was thinking about, okay, what, what is a uh, real um, two-day example of this? And I wanna tell you about my friend. Um, she's a friend that I've known for, we, we were friends in college. So that, unfortunately, that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but we've been friends for a really long time and, um, she has three children and her oldest is a seven-year-old. And back at the beginning of May, um, she, uh, her, her oldest daughter was like not feeling well, like her stomach was hurting. And there was something in my friend, Mary, who was like, this is not right. Like, you know, sometimes you have that, uh, or the moms in the room, you have like that mom instinct. She was like, something is not right. Something is not right. So she took her to the doctor and um, the doctor was like, yeah, I think we need to do some more testing. And so about May 12th, 13th, 14th, somewhere around there, she checked into the hospital to do this, this testing to figure out what's going on with her stomach. And over the course of weeks, she does, all, they think it's this, this, okay, so they start treating that. Oh, never mind, it's not that. So they, what, I, it could be this, let's try this, let's. And all of these tests and procedures to try and figure out what it is, her daughter's health is just continuing to decline. And it, it just, the, the daily of that. And um, she's been in the hospital. She doesn't leave the hospital once she checks in for that. And um, finally, they find out that she has this rare disease where her liver is no longer functioning. Her liver's not functioning anymore. And our bodies need our liver. And so as her liver is not functioning, I mean, her, she's to where now she's in ICU and it's just getting worse. And, and um, they figure out because of this, this um, 
specific disease that she has, like she's got to get a liver transplant and she has moved to the very top of the list. So they're waiting for a liver transplant. And y'all know all that, you mean, that the other, the other things that come with a organ transplant and all of that. And so they're waiting for this liver and praying and praying. And um, one night the doctor comes in, we've got a liver So tomorrow morning, bright and early, we're going to start preparing her for surgery. So she starts getting prepared for the surgery to get her new liver. And the very last minute, like she was about to go in, very last minute, they say, oh, never, this liver's not going to work. There was hope. And then it's like, you know. And um, all along, um, we text and all of this, and every single Every single text from Mary. There's details about medically what's going on, but every single text, you know what the focus is? Jesus. Jesus. I have hope because of this. This is the verse that God gave me today because of this. You know, it's all the the focused on Jesus throughout the whole thing. So then there's a second liver that's presented itself. And, um, and so we, our text, she's like, okay, we got, we're going to go into surgery tomorrow morning. And so we got this text. You can see a, par- a part of the text up there. I'll read it because it's kind of small. But um, so this is like the morning, I don't know, it doesn't show at time, but the morning that she's going to go in and get her liver transplant. And Mary says, there's just a lot of anticipation to get there. I keep thinking they're going to come in and say, never mind, since nothing really seems to happen when they think it will. And some of y'all know this feeling that deal with hospitals and things. But it's just totally out of all of our control. I was listening to worship music and heard the word liver, and it caught my ear, and realized it said de-liver. I'm claiming that word for us today, a literal deliver of her old and a delivery of the new. But also in a spiritual sense, so much peace and comfort when I look up all the verses that have the word deliver in it, trusting in the word of truth when my body seems to want to tell me not to get my hopes up. And I give you that story because I think you know, we reread these things like, oh yeah, I want to be, I want to, but that's what it looks like in real life. To no matter what, retain Jesus, no matter what, stay focused on Jesus and persevere. And y'all, I only God knows the fruit that has been produced by Mary Brantley's like, steadiness and perseverance there's there's 12 friends that are like have seen have have it's been a beautiful gift and were inspired by her example her community group her sisters her parents her children to watch their mother walk through something with such constant reliance on Jesus there is no i Idea of what kind of fruit is produced from that kind of living. A lot. A lot. And I think, you know, they're, they're, that's a big example. Your child is in the hospital. That's a big example of staying focused on Jesus and not letting the worries get in the way. Staying focused on Jesus. But also, I've, I've known Mary Brantley, like, when life is kind of good, where life is like, well, today I've got to make breakfast and clean up breakfast and then take my kids to the, you know, their school and then I got to do run this errand and then I got like, you know, the daily grind, you know, the daily grind and she's the same way in the daily grind. She's focused on Jesus in the carpool line and that. That is the, the, what Jesus wants for each of us. That we, we 
experience him, we cling to him. We actually do what he's calling us to do. We persevere when it gets hard. We persevere when it gets busy. We stay focused on it no matter what. And the fruit from that kind of faithful living, only God knows what the fruit is for that kind of faithful living. And so we're gonna sing one more song. And what I want you to think about as we sing is, What does it look like? What does it look like in your daily life? And some of you, I mean, I don't know all your, you know, circumstances and that you might be in a place where it's just like steady, easy, busy, but kind of good. Or you might be in a place where it's like, no, this is a really hard, hard season. But what does it look like in this season that you're in to stay focused on Jesus, to actually do the things that he's calling you to do, to not, you know, not just show up to check a box or not just, but like actually do what he's calling you to do. To be a seed, to have a seed on good soil. You hear the word, you retain it. You persevere. What does it look like? And I, I think our, like, think about what the disciples did. Hey, Jesus, what, help us understand this. In this moment, you can do what the disciples did. Just, okay, Jesus, what does this look like for me to receive you and do what you're calling me to do? Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and speak to individuals. You are a savior that desires relationship. So for each person in this room, you have something specific for them. I ask that you would give each of us the ability to persevere when it gets hard. we'd be able to retain your word. Give us good soil, Jesus. Amen. Would you stand with me, please, as we worship the Lord for one last song? Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing this out together.
stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in Thank you for the word that you have planted in our hearts as seeds this morning, Lord. We just take you with us into the rest of our day, into the rest of our week, God. I pray that you would multiply that seed, God, that you would produce a harvest of fruit in our lives, Lord, as we learn perseverance, as we learn to walk with Jesus in our lives, Lord. We thank you for this morning. Thank you for this church family. Thank you for your presence. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being here this morning. You guys have an amazing week, and we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you so much for joining our online worship experience. Be sure to check us out on social media. And if you have kids, check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. There's great stuff on there to engage your kids. Here at First Baptist Richardson, we're committed to serving our community and bringing them the things that they need. To find out more how to serve and how to be a part of our missions opportunities, visit our Facebook page. Guys, we also want you to stay connected to a group. So if you'll go to our website, fbrichardson.org slash online groups, you can find a group, email the leader, they'll invite you to join them. We're all connecting by way of Zoom and other uh, means. We want you to know you are not alone and to be able to fellowship and visit and pray together with others who are in the same situation you're in. Also, while we're in these times, we are still ministering and so your gifts are desperately needed by those we're serving. So if you go to fbrichardson.org slash give, you'll have an opportunity to participate in the offerings that we are sharing with this community as we continue the Lord's ministry. Thanks for watching us today and we can't wait to see you again.